Duncan. Welcome, everyone. And I know this is this has been an event I've really been looking forward to. And I have to say, Melissa, when I saw the um, the list of the upcoming books and the um, where they asked me which ones am I interested in advanced copies and doing live events, I was so excited to get I, I couldn't wait for them to have the um, advanced copy available for me because this you know, it's it's perfect timing for this time of year, and you and Cecily are just, you know, one of my favorite design teams, and so I knew that it was going to be really awesome, and of course, not disappointed. So I'm so glad to have you back, Melissa. Welcome back to the party line. Thank you. Thank you. That's really sweet of you to say. Yeah, I can I'm hear not, my child. Yeah, well, I'm <laughs> in the sorry. Background. Yeah, I'm sorry Cecily wasn't able to join you today, but I know you'll pinch hit for well so and give us an uh a special personal tour of the book. Yes. Yeah. yeah, which is um is is always my favorite part of talking to the talking to authors and and uh and everybody will get a chance to see what's going on. Oh, and I should probably tell people who are listening. Well, Melissa, Melissa's little girl has was just diagnosed with strep. So she's yeah, so kind of needing. Her, yeah, so she's kind of giving needing her mom. We were gonna give it a shot today, and um, and and hope that it's already Melissa, started. <laughs> yeah, hope that Melissa made it through. That my dogs don't bark. That you know that we're gonna <laughs> that we'll have a we'll have a relatively peaceful and orderly. Um, it's a, it's like a work at home mother reality show today. For me. Yeah, that's, that's, just the way, that's just the way it goes. So I think the last time we were here, Melissa, was for weekend hats, maybe. So yes, and I didn't didn't even have any children back then. Oh my no. gosh! Yeah, well, yeah. time flies now because you've got two, right? Yeah, I have two daughters, so four, two and four. Yeah, and 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 still managed to do another book. So, congrats for that. Yeah. Um. So it's a little break. <laughs> well, you know, a break's not a bad thing. So, tell us how the idea for the weekend wraps came together. Well, we were really happy with um, the reception that we got for weekend hats. People seemed to really like it, and um, we just were talking about the idea of doing another book, like. We had taken a break from doing projects together for a little while because I had had kids and stuff like that. And then we started brainstorming ideas for new books. And Cecily came up with, well, why don't we kind of continue on this like weekend theme? And so the idea we came up with was like maybe we'd move on to like bigger projects, but ones that like could still be done pretty quickly maybe in a weekend, a long weekend. And so we decided that we'd do projects that were in worsted or heavier yarns. And um, yeah, so <laughs> Cecily came up with the idea for the wraps idea. Yeah, and you know, the, and and then the, we kinda, the great thing about, about wraps done in worsted is you create some serious real estate pretty quickly. And uh, yeah. yeah, for those of us who are more instant gratification kind of people and not a sweater, mm -hmm. like a sweater that takes nine months to knit. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Which, so, so, um, I think, you know, most of us have multiple projects going. So we have the thing that fits in our purse. Mm -hmm. We have the thing that isn't going to take us all that long. And then we have the like crazy color work project that you're going to work on on and off for the next four years before you finish it. So, so this yeah. Is, and this also, great. well, also Cecily and I both live in New England. I live in Massachusetts and she lives in Maine. And so, you know, a, a heavier weight project, like a heavier yarn, like a wrap is really a useful, <laughs> a useful thing where we live, you know, and a substantial, really warm wrap is, is a great thing. Like I love lacy things, but in the winter, I'm always going for like the heavy things out here, you know? Oh, so yeah, it just, that, we spider, thought, that spider web mohair scarf gets less use up there in the winter time. 
I I think so. Yeah. Here here I use my uh I definitely use my like worsted weight. I have a lot of um Aaron weight cowls that I throw on, you know, with my big parka and so um we just thought that these would be nice, you know, they'd be useful useful projects and you'd get the satisfaction of completing them pretty quickly. Yeah, and I noticed there is a there are a lot of cables in this book, which I really love. And um our guest uh two weeks ago was Nora Gown, who just did the knitted cable source book and she's got great info in there as well on swapping out cables. So I think mm -hmm. these two books together could give you a gazillion options for yeah. for um for wraps and and especially since you know you're not trying to fit body size on them. So if it changes the gauge a little bit, you're still gonna get you know, you're still going to get the size that you're looking for or pretty close to it. So Jeannie was... Yeah, you have a little more flexibility with that, it, with these kinds of projects. Yeah, exactly. And then you don't have to worry about whether, if you're going to do them as gifts, whether they're going to fit the recipient because they're basically, you know, one size fits all, which is great. I mean, mm -hmm. truly, truly yeah. one size fits all, not the crazy, are you kidding me? One size could not fit all. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Always a little skeptical on the one size fits all. Um, so Jeannie says yeah. this cover wrap is amazing. And I thought the same thing. I, it was clear how this made it to the cover. In addition to the fact it's really, the whole book is styled, you know, it's the, it's styled so nicely, but the, um, it's kind of like that mix of like lacy and heavy cable and gorgeous, gorgeous color and texture. So d tell us about this project on the cover. Well, that um, is Bristol Ivy's design, and it's in a beautiful yarn, which has like a really nice drape to it. So when you throw a big wrap like that around your neck, it's, it kind of falls really nicely with the the um, with the drapier yarn. But um, we actually had, you know, a few a few projects that we just really loved for the cover, and that was just the one when they when they laid it out, it would just look perfect. Um, I really liked that. I really liked wrapping that one around me like a like a scarf. It was um I, it's laid out more like across the shoulders on the cover, but I really liked wearing it like a big heavy scarf. It was really really felt soft and I, like I said the yarn is very drapey, so it just looked really really nice. Yeah, it just looks really it's, snuggly. It looks like a very yeah, snuggly project which you know, for me, I mean, that's kind of the point, right? Is it? Sh it should be. It should be snugly, and I would not be scared to wear this around children or my dogs. Which, yeah, yeah, right. Which is another nice thing about working in the heavier yarns is they can take a lot more abuse. Although that you should never abuse your nets, but they can definitely take a lot more abuse than you know those little spider webby things. Yeah, like they're not going to get snagged as easily. Um, yeah, it's it's just um, I, I tend to knit a lot of heavier stuff mostly because I you know have time for those kinds of projects <laughs> these days. And uh, but but yeah, I just I like you know, I like how they hold up, and you know I'm I'm definitely someone who snags my clothing on stuff all the time. So yeah, and you don't you don't want to cry. If you just spent six months doing one of those wedding ring shawls. And somebody gets to yeah. wearing a bracelet, you know, it's yeah, exactly. yeah ex exactly. exactly. So now I tried to pull projects out of the book to kind of give people an idea of the different kinds of projects that you'll find. Cause it's not just, it's not just shawls. It's things that, and especially what I love about like these little capelets and then we'll see on the cowls that come after is they can be pulled down and worn on the shoulders or they can be pushed up and worn basically as a cowl or a scarf. And I, mm -hmm. loved, I loved this one, not just for the, the color is really gorgeous. And I, this, I see this color everywhere this fall. It was like a big runway color this year is the I love that color. I think it looks beautiful on, on like various skin tones, hair colors. It's just one of those really, really 
beautiful colors. Yeah, I mean, anybody can wear this color. It's really flattering up next to the face. Yeah, and Mary says she loves this color too. It's, but it's it's the combination of the color and the texture on this with that kind of wandering cable with the texture around it is so pretty. Tell us about this project. Well, it's the nice thing about it is it's one of those um, stitch patterns that's really easy to memorize, which I, I love because it means it's one of those projects that you can bring with you wherever you go and kind of like be doing other things. You know, with me, I'm constantly distracted, you know, like, to my kids and you know I'm trying to squeeze in a few rows and so I really love those kind of stitch patterns where you're you don't have to be like looking at a chart the whole time or whatever but it um it just it has it still has a little shape to it and it has it's a versatile cowl like the way in that photo it's pulled down over the shoulders like for extra warmth or you can just like you know wear it like a traditional cowl yeah it's but, um, so yeah. yeah and I but love it's that you know and this is like one of those stitch patterns it, that looks a lot more complicated than exactly it, it does look like a more complicated but it's it's an easy to memorize stitch pattern so once you've done it you know a little bit it just kind of like you know flies off the needle yeah that's that's always a good thing especially this time of year so and this was another one where I was so taken with the stitch pattern on it but you can also pull it down and wear it longer you know so there are there's a lot of different ways you can wear this piece it's really um it's really versatile tell us tell us about this one because i love that that the stitch pattern looks almost like calla lilies in a lattice it's just so pretty yeah yeah it's it's beautiful it's like a a little there's a little cable in that makes that makes it look like a flower, and then it has the um, the little diamond shapes. It's knit flat, which is kind of nice because there are plenty of people that like to, you know, knit flat instead of in the round. Then it's seamed later, but it allows you to really customize the piece. Like you can, there's a little note that Thea put in the pattern that, um, you know, says how you can add add a repeat to make it wider, or you can make it wider, or narrower, or longer. You can really adjust it to, you know, to make it yours you know so um but the way they have it the way she made it that size is nice because it again like carrie's cowl can be pulled down over the shoulders and or just worn around the neck for warmth it has like you know it has some versatility already but then there's also ways you can customize it yeah and the nice thing about knitting flat is you can make the decisions on that length as you go as opposed yeah you to, can oh, kind of hold it up and, yeah Exactly. Figure out, yeah, this is exactly where I want it to be. So, yeah, Roxy says she loves the flexibility of sizing for those who are height challenged. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, that's probably. I'm height challenged. Yeah, that's a good thing, you know, because, I mean, I mean proportion is going to be different on everybody, you know, depending on, you know, whether you're broad shouldered or small shouldered or tall or short, you know, that that's kind of the. Like, I love knitting in the round because it's, to me, it's like, I like to be done and not have to seam, but. The, I like to, I like, I like knitting in the round too. Yeah, but there's definitely, <laughs> My preferred thing. there's definitely some benefits of adjusting things when you're mm -hmm. without having to, you know, be six inches in and go, oh yeah, I wish this were about three inches bigger in circumference and then having to rip out and start over. So, exactly. Yeah. And Tricia wants to know, can this um, be knit in the round as well? No, I think the design will go a different direction. If you It would be, yeah, it would be in a different direction if you knit it in the round. I'm sure you could use a stitch pattern, you know, to knit in the round. It just wouldn't have the same look because the diamonds would be pointing up mm -hmm. instead of like around, going around the neck. Yeah, and the flowers would be pointing in or out instead of yeah. up and yeah. down. So. But, yeah. yeah, but um, which could be pretty too, Tricia. So mm -hmm. if you do one, let just send me a picture. Um, and then there's there are also some uh, some shawl type pieces in here as well. And when I looked at this, I thought, oh, you know what? You could almost knit that in your, I mean, with in your sleep. You know, once you get started, 
Mm-hmm. It's one of those stitch patterns that just becomes very zen when you knit it, which I think we all need projects like that. Yeah. Yeah, where you, you know, once you've once you've done a couple of rows, you just don't even need to look at the actual stitch pattern instructions because yeah, I love that cut kind of you know that's what made knitting relaxing for me when I first started knitting and I started to feel like comfortable like I could just it was kind of like the muscle memory was there you know and you just kind of you could watch a movie and be knitting or you know whatever I really I really enjoy that kind of knitting because that's still relaxing for me yeah and without having to like figure out where you are on that stitch chart um, at all times, yeah. at all times. And the other thing I liked about this too is you can see at the top where it rolls back, where you can see what the underside of the stitch pattern looks like, and it's it's very lovely. So you yeah. know you don't have that. There's only you know I only need to show the right side and how you know that kind of thing, and um, that it it's going to look nice even when the underside shows, which is. A very good thing. So, oops, something happened here. That was, I'm sure, me. But, um, yeah, I was actually running over because we had some questions, and um, yeah, and and Roxy says she. Oh no, here we are. Um, Roxy says she loves not needing a shawl pin, which. I agree. That's like one more thing to get to keep track of, especially if you end up taking it mm-hmm. off your indoors. It's nice to be able to, you know, just tie it back on and not worry about sticking the pin through and hoping it doesn't fall off when you put it on the back of your chair. And um, Trisha, yeah, loves- I love this piece. Sorry, I just love that this is a great piece for it. it it's for more seasons than your traditional kind of like heavy shawl this is a really really open it's even though it's a heavier weight yarn it's still very open so you can wear it across multiple seasons it's really nice yeah and you know and depending on what color and what yarn you knit this in it could be dressy or casual and you can you can see Mm -hmm. the checks of her shirt through it so you know that what you put underneath it is actually going to kind of change the look which is also really um, cool. And um, mm. Roxy says it would be perfect for flying. And Trisha says it would. She loves the simplicity and versatility of this piece. And um, yeah, yes, Angela did two beautiful projects for our book. We just we were so in love with the submission, both submissions. We couldn't decide. You know, we wanted to pick one of them, and then we were just like, you know what? Let's ask her. She'll do both of them. So she has two pieces in our book. Um, Angela Tong is very talented. I just, I really just love, wait, you'll, I don't know if you'll see the cowl that she did, but she has a great um, cowl that's so genius. It's it's an interlock cowl. It's so great. It's one of my favorite projects in the book. And, and she did that along with this beautiful shawl. I feel very lucky. <laughs> yeah, very pretty, very pretty. And then this I love, you know, I... I was trying to remember whether I had ever seen like a, a ribbed shawl like this, or I guess this is a cartridge stitch if it's worked side to side, but it's, it's, it's just ribbing. Yeah. It's just yeah. ribbing with, um, with shaping and that's it. It's, um, I just really wanted to do something like shawl. I'm, I'm not like a fancy shawl person, although I really love knitting lace. I just don't wear shawls that much but I I like the triangle shape and I wanted something like rustic and was trying to do something like shawl shape but different and so I just I thought why not ribbing and you know just with shaping along the edge and trying something new and and I liked it (laughs) yeah it's really it's really it's pretty and the um and is I think there was a question from Mary. She wants to know if it's the same shawl, like the same shape as the one above it. But I I don't think so. I think the tie, the ties here on this one are are quite slender, and this doesn't have like yeah, that's very lacy, lacy, and this one isn't lacy at all. This one yeah. is definitely more dense. Just rib, it's just ribbing. Yeah, but you know, it it just looks so warm and comfortable, and. Mm-hmm. 
Um, what do you remember? What yarn you used on this? Because it really is. It, I, is it's it like Brooklyn a Tweed Shelter. Ah. I use Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, so it's a really rustic wool. I I love it. It's I I that's the kind of yarn that I really really like because I it's hard wearing. You know, it lasts. You know, the projects you make and that kind of stuff just really last. I have things I made when I first started knitting out of yarns like that are like this, and they just they look the same pretty much. You know. Yeah, and this kind of has almost like that like pre-washed kind of faded jeans sort of look to it that I think it would, mm -hmm. and it, you can almost see like the little chunky flecks and stuff in the yarn. It's really, it's really, it's a beautiful yarn for that kind of a shawl. Really pretty. And then um, yeah. here's another shawl that actually has kind of a little shawly collar kind of effect to it, the way they've styled it here. Tell us about this one. Oh, I love I love that shawl so much. It's just um, it's hard to see from that particular photo, but it's it's just you know knits and pearls of the stitches. Like they, it's it's genius the way she um, designed it. So you're only working the pattern on one side, but it looks like you would be having to work the pattern on both rows. It's it's great. It's it's a worsted weight shawl. It's a great size, so really, that's the kind of thing you could definitely wrap around you, you know, when you're cold, and it would really keep you warm. It's it's beautiful, but again, it's really easy to knit because you're only working the pattern patterning on one side, so the other side, you know, it's kind of like a rest row, you know. Yeah, and actually, so, um, um, Jeannie yeah, says that this is stunning. She loves the collar. And um, Mary says, yes, this is really something that just that color effect is really, that's really special on how that's constructed. And, and yeah. this, this so the color orange. is so popular right now, too. Yeah, I loved all these oranges. We, we kind of like for inspiration, we were, we used photos to be sent out to the, for the design call. We sent out, you know, some photos for inspiration. We kind of did the like New England fall weekend kind of thing for inspiration. So then we kind of like pulled those kind of like fall colors first when we were trying to like decide on colors for the book. So um, this there were, there were these orangey colors that you see, you see a few of in the book and that's, you know, because of our, our inspiration was kind of like the New England fall weekend, you know, what would you want to, make or wear on that kind of weekend. Yeah, and uh, Mary says this kind of reminds her of an, like an old cardigan. You know, it's like that best friend yeah. just pull out of the closet kind of thing. It's always, it's kind of the go-to. It becomes one of your favorites, which I get. And Yeah, this is one of those things that I, I from the book that I just really want to make, you know, if I ever have time to knit someone else's design yeah. again. Yeah. And that I, is something that I definitely want to make. And it's one of those things that you're going to wear for 20 years. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's not like it's like a fad or anything. It's really, it's really pretty. Linda wants to know, is it triangular shaped as well in the back? It is. It is a triangle shawl. It is. And um, it's nice. It's, it's knit in Spud and Chloe sweater, which is like a wool and cotton yarn. And it, um, it's like it has like this really nice weight to it so it's a worsted weight shawl which already is a little heavier and then the yarn has this just really nice weight I don't know when I got that shawl in the mail I just threw it around myself I just loved it I love everything the color and I just think the design is genius like it looks like you would have to work the patterning on both sides but one every other row you're knitting you're doing knit stitches only so yeah, so speedy, speedy, speedy as well, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah, we like speedy. And then <laughs> I love this. I'm just, I'm in love with cables, but I think the cables on this one are really, really special. And then just that little bit of Pico edging on it, you know, yeah. keeps it from, like, you know, gives it kind of that soft, girly feel to it as well. Tell us about this project. Yeah, this is Tannis Gray's beautiful cabled wrap, and she ch she chose a great um, stitch pattern. Like it doesn't like the yarn is hand dyed, so it you know has some beautiful variation. But the stitch pattern 
doesn't like take, you know, it does neither one distracts from the other. Like it does, you still notice like the beautiful variation in the yarn and the stitch pattern doesn't get lost in the, in the yarn. It's really, it's a beautiful design. I love this giant cable in this bulky yarn. I, I just think it looks wonderful. And the Pico bind off is kind of like a neat little, you know, thing that adds like a really nice finishing touch instead of just binding off. Yeah. But um, this is this is another super warm wrap because it is it is a really heavy yarn. It's great. I love it. Yeah, really, it's really like will wrapping like, up in your favorite blanket kind of wrap. Yeah, it is. It's like a, it's almost like wearing a small blanket. It's really great. Yeah, and um, J Bar says that it, this would be a beauty with jeans, which I agree. Yeah, you know, it's kind of, it's really a statement piece and. And, you know, Tannis does a lot of those, like, you know, 12 foot scarves with the big giant cables and you look at him and it's like, you know, I mean, you would only want to wear like a white shirt and a pair of jeans underneath it because you just don't want to distract from how gorgeous yeah. the piece is. And I think this is one of those things too, where, you know, simple underneath it and let the, let the shawl do the talking because it's really beautiful. Yeah. It, Tannis amazes me because she's such a prolific designer, yet oh she still God. comes up with, like, one beautiful piece after another. And I definitely get in a funk, you know, where I'm like, oh, you know, right now I just can't, you know, I'll have these times where I'm just, like, not feeling the new ideas. But I just, she just has so many published designs, and she continues to always have great ideas. Well, you really know, impressive. she is the official queen of the Planet Pearl party line because she has visited... Yeah more times than anyone else by a very long shot because the books just keep coming. So oh, no. <laughs> yeah, she's like, she's no slacker. <laughs> no, that woman doesn't sleep. So, but yeah, <laughs> she just, just doesn't sleep. And, uh, they, she, put, yeah. she couldn't sleep. There's no way. No, <laughs> I think it would be impossible. So this is, mm -hmm. I love this. I love the angle of the cables on this and how it's mixed with that kind of fillet mesh. It's yeah, know, I love that combination too. Cables and lace. It's just what a great combination. Yeah, tell us about tell us about this project. Well, I I just I love the shape of this. It's again, it's you know, it's warm but then the lace kind of like makes it from being makes it not overwhelming. I I love that it's I love like the angles in it you know the it's kind of like a diagonal well the, diagonal shape and on, then it, it's kind of knit on the bias is that yeah, yeah yeah and it's just I mean it's just gorgeous I and it's in a it's in another Brooklyn tweed yarn a newer one called Quarry which is a heavier one of their their heavier weight yarns and uh it just, it's really nice. Like I think that the, having those panels of mesh, like really balance out like the weight of the yarn and the cabled, you know, denser sections. I think it makes it just like the perfect, you know, it's, it's a perfect design for a heavy yarn. Yeah. And I, I think, think it's with the mesh in it, it really makes it multi-seasonal because it's not yeah, quite as yeah. heavy. Yeah. It's re very, very, very pretty. I really, I, and I'm just a sucker for hoods because I find them just so darn romantic. You know, there's just something, yeah. and there's just something romantic about, and face framing, and there's just, I don't know, there's just, I, maybe it's like the little red riding hood in all of us or something, but this is really, really pretty. Tell us about this project. Well, I, I've never understood why there aren't more hooded scarves because they're just genius. Like you wear it, you can have it like around your neck just loosely if you're a little warm, like, but the hood is there, you know, if it starts to get windy or something. And a long time ago, Cecily had knit a hooded scarf and gave it to one of our mutual friends who wore it to like everything. Every year we'd go to Rhinebeck, she'd wear it. She wore it all the time. And I was always like, I, I need a hooded scarf. And uh, I never knit one and all these years. And then when we, um, Kristen had submitted this design for a hooded scarf, I was like, yeah, yeah, that, that the world needs more hooded scarves. And it's a very simple design, uh, but it's like, I mean, so wearable. You, you know, just 
looks like a regular scarf that, you know, you don't even notice the hood behind you if you don't need it. And then it's, it, again, it gets windy and you throw it on. It's, I love hooded scarves. I <laughs> think they're genius. Yeah. And you never have to worry about losing your hat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, there are lots of people who aren't hat people, and this is like the perfect alternative if you're not a hat person, having like a hooded scarf. So you just, you know, if you absolutely need your head and ears covered, it's you got it. You could always like, you know, make the hood looser if you didn't like, you know, didn't want it fitted or, you know, there's lots of things you could do to make it just right for you. Yeah. And yeah, new, no hat hair. No hat hair rocks you that. Ex yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You don't get that scrunch mark, or you know, around the back yeah. of your head where your hair got flattened. I know. Yeah. So we just we, had hat weather the other day, and I and yeah, we all had the hat head going on. Exactly. Yeah, That's but, the down, uh, it's the downside of the beanie, is especially if yeah. you have curly hair, you end up with flat hair to the hat line, and then all the curly hair <laughs> is just sticking out. It's really yeah. not. It's not pretty. Oh, yeah, it is a much better. Yeah, idea. I don't have curly hair at all. I have pin straight hair, so I never had that problem. Yeah, it's an, it's not nice. It's it's not attractive, and I I love I love 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 belted wraps because I I think they're you know that's kind of it's kind of that connection between a wrap and a and a like a wrap sweater. And I thought, yeah, I had never thought about it being styled that way. And then when I saw the pictures, I was like, oh, it looks gorgeous that way. Yeah, it it's, looks gorgeous that way. It's really beautiful. And this looks like another one that's knit kind of on the bias, right? Yes, it is. It is. And it's, you know, it's garter stitch, too. So it's, again, one of those ones that's like the design is really smart and but it's it's going to be easy enough for like a newer knitter to do you know it's just going to be a little bit of an adventurous newer, newer knitter can do it and have some fun but you know you can still do other you can still watch a movie while you're knitting it and that yarn is heavier and it's in garter stitch so it's super dense and warm this is a really really warm wrap if yeah. you're looking for what if, if you're what, a New Englander, this is, is this a great, <laughs> this is a great knit. What is this one knit? Huh? What is this one knit? It's, in? Oh, it's oh wool bulky. Oh, that explains it. Yeah. yeah. And the colors, those are the exact colors that she submitted her idea. And we we're just like, yeah, like we didn't even want to change anything about it when we saw yes. her submission. We were just like, nope, we want to like th those colors. Absolutely. Like we didn't want to change anything about it because it was just so perfect the way she had envisioned it yeah and candy says she loves this one and Jeannie says usually when a book comes out she's interested in one or two patterns but this book has winners lots of winners and her, <laughs> her to-do list is growing yeah I, I i thank you i feel your i i feel you Jeannie. i know exactly what's going on here yeah and kate m says she loves the colors in this one which i think it's just a really unusual but and beautiful color combination so i mean really, it really I mean, is they're just i mean you could do this in black and white and gray and get a totally different look out of it you know, you could mm -hmm. do it and you could do it in brights. You could do it in red and hot pink and orange and get a totally different look out of it. So, yeah, the, yeah. the colors are like vintagey and they just like, I don't know, they just are so beautiful together. I, I love the combination. It was just, yeah. it was a great, great choices on her part. Yeah. It kind of has that like well-worn and well-loved look to it with the softer colors. I think. It's yeah. Really yeah. I love that. Yeah, Mary says this one looks like it's very fun. I agree. And then I love shrugs. I don't wear them because um, I have a little more um, chest maybe than this model does. I but I, yeah, but you know, I tend to wear a little longer length in my in the front on these. But I was so taken by the stitch patterns that are used on this shrug. I mean, it, this is really a gorgeous, gorgeous piece of work. Linda says this is going to be her first project. So yeah, this is, again, Lily says every time she gets ready to post, this is my favorite. The next photo pops up and she changes her mind. 
pages. They're all awesome. <laughs> and she's very excited about this book, which you know, maybe you'll win today. Maybe you'll win later <laughs> this week on Facebook. But um, yeah, yeah, tell us about this gorgeous shrug. Uh, well, this is one of um, Cecily's designs, and she she does really great shrug designs. Sorry, I'm, I have children coming in and <laughs> into the room I'm in. I'm very sorry in advance, but um, Cecily does has always done some really cute shrug designs. She just seems to have like a knack for that. Okay, one second, guys. I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. no, that's okay. <laughs> but um. But yeah, I love that this shrug is covered, it's just full of texture, like there's the, you know, the background stitch, and then there's the cable, like, panel down the middle, it's just, it's really, it's really full of texture, but it's a small, it's a small um, size, you know, so it's not, like, over overwhelming, like a full-size sweater might be, yeah. you know, for some people, like, some people like a little more plain, but this little shrug, like, if you had a really plain outfit, it would add some fun texture to it and you know while serving the purpose of warming you up at the same time yeah and this is one of those pieces you could wear if you work in an office or you work indoors in the summertime when they turn the yeah. AC up right? and the air condition it's like the perfect piece for like an, a really cold office yeah Mary Alice says she loves this which I agree it's just so pretty and then the last one I pulled this to me you know, this was like, I would wear this on the couch watching TV every time I sat down. It's just, it's almost, it is like wearing your favorite blanket. It's yeah. And the cool thing about this is that it wasn't even intended to be styled that way. It's actually, um, if you look at the Ravelry page, Amy, the designer, Amy Christopher, she, she shows it in the ways that she had intended it to be worn, which is like, with bigger fronts, it's like a, it's like she wears it upside down from this photo, and it's really cool because it works both ways. It's really, really, really a cool design, and it's one of those loose ones that I, it's just so cozy. But um, I, I definitely encourage people to check out those photos too because it it makes you want to knit it even more because then you see like that there's it has so many like so many things going for it. It's a really fun design. Yeah, it's it's just. It, this just looks like something you want to snuggle up in. It's really, yeah. it's really pretty. So, ah, well, thank you for the tour. I know people are going to want to know where they can keep track of you in a very non-stalkery from a distance kind of way. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but the internet allows that, which is great. So, yeah. Yeah, so if um so Melissa's website, this is my favorite name for a knitting website ever, is um knitting school dropout dot com where <laughs> you can um see what's up with Melissa and what she's working on. Because I know you do a lot of designing for yarn companies and other things where so people can um find your patterns when you're not doing a book. And Yeah, I do self publishing and work for yarn companies, so yeah, so there's, there's a lot, other, a other lot of different things. Yeah, you can find Melissa's stuff. You can also um, check out um, Melissa's um, Facebook page. That the colors on that hat are really cool. Um, anyway, Thank you. so um, and then also for people who are on Ravelry, you um, Melissa has a design page as well where you can see all the rest of her projects and you can uh, all in one place and then figure out where to go run and buy her patterns and for cecily um cecily you can actually find cecily yarn all one word dot with only one y dot wordpress.com is cecily's website where you can um, find uh, her individual patterns as well and it's actually Cecily AM, Cecily AM at WordPress.com. Oh, Cecil. Oh, I thought that was yarn. I should really wear my yeah. glasses more off. It does. It does look like that when you look at it, because it does. It does look if you look like I'm looking at it right now, and it totally looks like that in tiny letters. But it is Cecily AM. Okay, there you go. I should definitely wear <laughs> my glasses on before these. And then you can also um, 
check out Winged Knits um, from Cecily on Facebook. And she does a, have a designer page on the um, on Ravelry for those who are on Ravelry. And you can see all the different places her designs show up as well. And if you're not lucky enough to win a book today during the live event, and we'll be giving one away on Planet Pearl's Facebook page starting at 8 o'clock uh, tomorrow morning. Um, but if you don't win either of them, we do encourage you, of course, to call your local yarn store to purchase the book because we always want to support the local yarn stores. Um, but if they don't have it, well, the first question is, well, why the heck not? And then if you just have to have it now, um, you can go to Planet Pearl and click on books and you will see it right here. And there's a link on that page where you can help support Planet Pearl by buying it through Amazon through our link. So, um, but yeah, you're going to want this book because I guarantee you, you're going to knit more than one thing from it. So it's, um, which I know, it's about the price of three patterns. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's, that's kind of the crazy thing is when you find a book that is chock full of projects that you would knit today or maybe next year or maybe go back to it the year after and find another wrap or a cowl or a shrug because um, there's just so many great patterns in this book that I think it ends up being one of those books that ends up completely dog-eared in your library, which is a yeah. good thing, which is a, which is a good thing. So, so, um, our, so our, yeah, truly timeless from Roxy and, uh, Jeannie says that each project is lovely, which I completely agree. Thank you. <laughs> so, Melissa, are we gonna are we gonna um, see any more books from you? Or are you going the self published individual patterns for a while? Well, I just finished doing a lot of patterns this year. I did more patterns than I've done in any of the years since I had children. I just um, right now I'm not doing another book. I, I just have been working on individual patterns for yarn companies and various other things. But um, I'm, I, haven't, I haven't ruled that idea out, but I, right now I'm just focusing on the individual pattern thing and trying to get some self-published patterns out this winter. So yeah, well, that's we, what you'll be seeing a lot of. Well, I did a lot of projects for Quince this year. That'll be my big thing over the next few months. That I'll have a bunch of more patterns from Quince coming out, Quince and Company. So that was a big part of my year. Well, and people will be able to keep track of that if they check your website out. So, yeah, yeah. With, two, with two little kids, the book thing is a little uh, intense. Yeah. It's a, yeah. Little, it's a little intense. So, I like yeah. to do things, take a break, do things, take a break. Yeah. Well, Mary <laughs> Alice says it's a lovely book, and Linda says thanks for sharing the book. It's a fabulous collection, very giftable projects, which I agree, though. I Thank you back so much. If I started knitting them as gifts, I would end up keeping them <laughs> because that's just the kind of knitter I am. So, but thank you. Thanks so much for joining us today, Melissa. I really appreciate it. And everybody, everybody in the room, stick around because I'm about to give away a copy of the book. And if you missed any part of, uh, for people in the room, if you missed any part of uh, today's interview, of course, it'll be posted up on on uh, YouTube later, and you can either subscribe to Planet Pearl's YouTube channel so you always know when there's something new, or check our Facebook mm -hmm. page, and because uh, there's always a link up to the recordings. So um, thanks so much, Melissa. Hang around and help me give away a book. Okay.